Hello guys, we are back with our next tutorial. In this tutorial, let us go through context-free grammar. So this was discovered or described by Chosky, a linguist in 1950s, describing four classes for generative devices or grammar that defines four different four classes for any language, guys. So two of these grammars we are having only two in our syllabus, guys. So we'll be covering only two. So two of them are context free grammar that is nothing but describing syntaxes and regular free grammar that is nothing but describing tokens. So shall we go to the next tutorial or shall we start here only guys. Okay let's start here only. So now let us go through BNF that is nothing but Bacchus nor form. This was invented by two scientists guys. This is the main use of this is to justify whether the syntaxes are proper or not. Okay. So in 1960s John Bacchus and Peter Knorr introduced the formal notation method for describing syntaxes for a programming language which is popularly known as BNF that is nothing but Bacchus from the first guy second word and Knorr from the first second guy second word okay with a form as an extension. So this was basically designed for all girls 60 the first language with BNF is all girls 60 guys. So BNF and context free grammar are almost identical. They are almost identical. We can even say that they are similar also guys. Fine. Once we are going through the examples, you will be having a clear idea guys. So don't worry about that. So BNF is a meta language for programming languages. So meta language is a language that is used to describe another language. Fine. So these are the languages which, are, which we are using to define another language, right? Fine. So the few important symbols in BNF are the scope resolution operator is equals to that is nothing but double colon and with equals to means defined as is defined as we'll be using this symbol you'll be going through that guys don't worry so and this less less than and greater than symbols means can be described as it can be described as like that and this single straight slash is nothing but or operation Okay guys, so once we are going through the examples, we will be having a clear idea, we will be going through one or two examples guys, don't worry. So BNF uses abstraction from synthetic structures. So basically for every syntax or every statement, this BNF will be working guys. For every statement it will be working. Okay, so let us assume Java assignment statement in this way. We are having an assign, that is, that is we are having an assignment that is variable is equal to some expression is given. So our assignment is our user defined name guys. I will be giving my expression name as um, initialization. So here I will be writing initialization. Here the variable name let us assume x is equal to 10. So this will be our left hand side. So the left hand side is what the it consists of abstraction. So it is a non terminal symbol guys. Symbol that can appear in output. So this is, there is a possibility that this can appear in output where token, limax, leximus and uh, references these are terminal. They can be replaced and they are strings. Got it? So these are the right hand side. This is the left hand side. Wow. So once we are going through the example you will be having the idea guys. Don't worry. So the examples of terminals are nothing but plus equals to and uh, those are something like star, comma, if, while, etc. Cannot be break guys. Break is not a terminal statement. So the non-terminals are sentences, expressions, programs, terms, which can be breaked. These cannot be breaked and these can be breaked guys. That's the main difference between those two. Fine. So now let us go through one example first and then we will be going through one more example. Don't worry, it's really clear. So let us assume a loop guys. If Condition with two parentheses and middle there, middle there is some code. Let us assume. So I will be writing a user defined name, guys. This is just a user defined name. So I will be just writing in this way. If it is a if loop, if underscore loop, that is nothing but I am assigning this to the whole loop to this. So this will be working as a whole function. This is our loop name, guys. Fine. So inside that we are having if part. That's it, right? So we can even further solve this if part guys. So what does this if part condition? If part consists. It consists a condition and a body. So I can write that if with a condition. Right. 
and it also has a body b o d y this also use a defined name so i'll be writing like this okay so this will be our bnf order for this guys so write this whole in a single line like this if underscore loop is equals to that is nothing but colon colon equal to if condition then body so if you write this and this line beside so that will be our bnf order for this okay guys so now i hope everyone got a small idea on this so this syntax is in c c++ guys so now let us go through some other language so in a language we are having begin and end we are having three statements guys so we need to form the bokas nor forms that is nothing but bnf forms for these three statements so the first statement is a equal to b plus c the second statement is b is equals to a plus d and the third statement is d is equals to a plus b so okay let us go through it so first will be beginning and ending okay that's fine so initially we will be assuming that the syntax consists like this guys let us assume the program that's a program right so program is the user defined name that i gave sorry user defined name that i gave with double colon equal to i am assigning it to begin in between i am having a body and end that's it right okay fine so here we are having body with the statement one and we are having some series of statements right and we are ending the body there right so even if you want you can write in this format also guys as if the previous like statement one after the other or you can even write in this format where you will be specifying that body colon colon statement one with the or statement or statement if one statement exists then the next statement also exists so it continues into the body again and again guys so if the, if this is zero it will going to end there that end there itself that is why it started here it went here came back went came back went came back as many statements are there it continues the loop and prints the and stores the statement that is now a is equal to b plus c b equal to c plus d like that and at any situation if there is only the single statement then it ends right there so that will be the last statement so that's the reason why i have just drawn boxes guys so initially it try, tries to refer those two and in the second case it refers only these two so that is how the bnf order works guys so in the next tutorial we'll be going through grammar and its derivatives thank you thanks for watching